I love it. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1984 Mercedes 300D turbo diesel. Up front is a 3.0 liter inline 5 and down below is a 4 speed automatic gearbox. Alright, so let's talk about that inline 5 cylinder, which is really weird. I've never driven a car with an odd number of cylinders. It's a diesel motor as well and it's also turbocharged. It's got a lot going for it. And it makes about 120 some horsepower from the factory, but as we can assume, it's probably lost a couple over the years. I wouldn't say this car is responsive or quick. 20, 30, 40, <laughs> 45. <laughs> all stock, never been replaced, never been messed with, 195,000 miles. It's amazing to me that one untouched motor can go 195,000 miles over more than 30 years without being messed with or rebuilt or anything like that, which is really a testament to Mercedes build quality of their diesels. The four speed automatic really isn't doing you any favors. It's not a quick transmission, but it's not jerky which is nice because I think this car is more of a cruising car. Although this car is rear wheel drive, with the amount of power and the transmission, you really don't have any hopes of breaking those tires loose. But why would you? I mean, this is a big Mercedes. Like, that, that's not the point of it. If you're looking for a car to break the tires loose, I don't think you should really look into these cars. So let's talk about the interior because I think the interior of this car is really interesting because in front of me, I have a, a speedometer and a tack. I have an oil pressure gauge which is measured in bars, I have a water temperature gauge which is measured in Celsius, I have a fuel gauge which is, it just says one out of one, half tank, or refill, that's what the R stands for, and then down below on the tack is a clock, it's an actual analog clock that'll tick on the dashboard which is really cool, it's really nice because it's right there if you're looking at your gauges. I just you don't see that anymore in cars. In the center console, it's very bare. You get some climate controls, you have your blower controls, and a radio. That's pretty much it. You have a couple switches for your dome light, but it's really basic, and I really like that. I think cars these days have way too many buttons and gizmos and touch this, touch that. It's just too much, and this is just plain and simple. Next to one of the dome lights is a switch for the vacuum operated antenna, which will raise and lower. As you see, the interior of this car is tan, or sort of like a, a brownish tan, and I really like the look of it. I think it's, it's really luxurious, and this interior is actually held together really well, especially for 195,000 miles and more than 30 years. But I think by far my favorite part of this car has to be the outside. I don't know what it is, I can't put my finger on it, but this car just looks awesome. I just want to keep staring at it and taking pictures of it. I don't know if it's the yellow fog lights that are just so European, or if it's that uninterrupted body line that goes from the headlights all the way to the taillights. Whatever it is, this car just has this aura around it, this presence on the road. Not that you're necessarily better than everyone, but... When you look at this car, it makes you think that the person driving it is important. He's got somewhere to be. Especially the, the boxiness, the boxy shape of these cars, you just don't see anymore, which is a shame. But it's a really interesting looking car, and it's one of my favorite looking cars. So I have to thank Zach for letting me drive his Mercedes. He emailed me after watching a couple of my reviews, and I absolutely jumped on the opportunity because if you guys have ever seen Childish Gambino's video called for his song Heartbeat, he drives one of these in the video. And back before I got my RX-7, I was looking at a bunch of different cars and I saw that music video and I fell in love with old Mercedes. I just thought they looked so cool just to cruise around in, just not as a fast car, not a quick car, but just something unique, big, comfortable, that just looks awesome. 
And when you park it and you walk away, you find yourself turning around and staring at it every time. So thank you, Zach, for that. Now you guys might also recognize this car through a couple other things. Mythbusters ran one of these on vegetable oil. These are the motors that can run on used cooking oil, which is really interesting. But also, in the old Top Gear series, I think it was Jeremy Clarkson took it uh, through South of Africa. He took one of these. Uh, it was a little bit smaller engine, but same body style, which again, is one of my favorite body styles. So really, the only fault I see with these old Mercedes is the power. The power is not a lot. And this is the turbocharged model. They made a naturally aspirated model. I don't wanna know. I, you know what? Because this is not quick by any means, but a, a naturally aspirated model, that, that's got to be a little bit, just a little bit quicker than walking. Now, another thing I keep getting reminded of while I'm driving this car is really just the build quality that Mercedes put into this car. Now, I can't speak for modern Mercedes, but at least in the 80s, it seemed like they were doing something right. Even the doors sound amazing on this car. It's a real solid thunk. 195,000 miles, original everything. Still ticking, still feels like what it did 30 years ago. Besides some minimal body rust, this car is solidly built. This is a German brick. The Swedish, they have their Volvos, but this is the German brick. The other thing I've noticed is that this thing is super easy to drive. Sure, it's a little down on power and you gotta work the gas pedal a little bit, but it has power steering. I'm not struggling. I mean, really, I have to film these reviews with the windows up so then the air conditioning doesn't make noise and mess up the audio. The European Touring Car Championships. Oh, really? But with the windows down, I would be totally comfortable taking this on a multiple hour drive. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about the Mercedes 300D turbo diesel. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.